G'day, Stupid Rabbit Futures here, and today, well, I'm going to help you decide what motor is right for your mini quad. So we're going to talk about what sort of types of motors there are, their sizes, what the numbers mean, and uh, what you should consider, and their voltages, and a whole bunch of things that are going to help you pick the right motor for your mini quad, depending on what you want it to do. So uh, we'll have a closer look at some of the motors I've got on the bench, and we'll uh, get right through the nitty gritty, and hopefully by the end of it, you'll know exactly what motor you want to pick for your mini quad. Alright, let's get started. Alrighty, so I've got a bunch of motors here and these are all fantastic motors for mini quads But how would I know what one is right for the mini quad that I specifically want to build? So there's about four or four and a half things I think people need to consider first and we'll jump into each one of these in detail in a minute But just as a quick overview the first one we're going to talk about is the size of the motor and how much torque It's probably going to have the second one. It's going to be we're going to be talking about the KV rating uh, The third important factor is how heavy a motor is and also the fourth one we're going to be looking at how many amps or uh, just how much juice you can pump into a motor and still get good results and then the fifth one or the four and a half one I guess if you're concerned about that is also the efficiency rating anyway with that being said let's grab one of these motors have a look at the numbers on here and uh, get started all right, so I've got a bunch of motors here, and we're going to talk about each one in detail. And these are probably the most common sizes that are out there for mini quads. And uh, they've all got numbers like 2204, 1806, 1306, what's this one, an 1105. Uh, and we're going to talk about what those numbers mean. So the first digits in those, the first two digits, so the 22, the 18, the 13, or the 11, that tells you how like the diameter of the motor so this one is 22 millimeters across like this because this is a 2204 this is an 1806 so this is 18 millimeters across the motor uh, this is the 1306 so 13 millimeters and the 1105 right here well if you said 11 millimeters you would be correct and the reason that this is important because the size usually determines how how much grunt a motor has and the second part on there, the 2204, so the 04 part in there determines how high the stator is. So we've got the 04, so it's 0.4 millimeters tall. This one's uh, 06, so uh, 6 millimeters. What's this one? Uh, that one's 1306, so the 06, so 6 millimeters tall. And this one is an 05. So uh, the four numbers you first see when you read a motor, so 1806 means it's 18 millimeters across, and the stator is 6 millimeters high. Now, Stu, why are those numbers important? Well, you see, usually, given the size of a motor, and if it is larger, has a bigger stator and a bigger diameter, means that it's going to be able to pull uh, and have a lot more torque. Now a good analogy to think here is that uh, these motors are bigger so they can generally spin a bigger prop. So the 2200 motor is much bigger than the 1100 motor. So think of this one more like a sports bike or something like that and this one sort of getting up uh, to a truck or something like that. This is going to be able to have a much heavier load and hence a much bigger prop than something like this. If you put this size prop on such a little motor like this it's going to have a hard time spinning it and you'd probably burn it out. So you want to choose the right motor depending on what sort of frame you get. Alright, so let's talk specifics between things because sometimes there can be some very similar motors. So I've got two Cobra motors right here and they're both the 22 size motors but uh, this one is a 2206 motor and this one is a 2204 motor. So that tells me that this stator is a bit bigger in here and that usually means that I'm going to be able to spin a heavier or a bigger prop on this one as opposed to this one just here. There's some other factors that come into play but that's the general rule that the bigger the motor and the larger the stator are uh, usually means that they're going to be better suited to spinning a bigger prop and also at a lower KV, which brings us into our next topic, which is the KV rating. All right, so this is the second thing you need to consider when having when choosing your motor, and that is the KV rating. So behind these numbers we've got here, so the 1806, you're all gonna see, you're gonna see another one which says 2700 KV. Now what KCV stands for is how many times it's going to spin around per volt per minute. So it's not the RPM, uh, but it gives you a good indication of how fast it's going to spin depending on what cell battery you hook it up to and things like that. And that is really important because a lot of us run 2S, 3S, 4S, and if you're a bit crazy, even 5S batteries. So that's very important to know. So let's have a look at some of the examples. So over here we have a 2100 KV, 2300 KV, 2700 KV, 3,100 kV and 4,000 kV. So I've put this in these orders. And you, now you might have noticed that the larger motor down here, the 2206, has a kV of 2,100, and the smallest motor up here, this 1306, has a kV of 4,000. 
And the reason these small ones spin faster is because it's a lot easier to spin something small a lot quicker than it is some of these big heavier motors out here, at least without burning them out or wrecking the motor. So you might say to yourself, Stu, I want to have the most power out there. I'm going to put a massive prop on uh, this motor just here because it's a 4000 kV, but uh, that would be a disastrous idea because if you put this something, even though it has a high kV rating, all these kVs, that is without load on them. So as soon as you put this huge prop on here, you're loading up the motor and it's going to be well overloaded or over propped as some people would say and it's not going to be it's not going to be able to spin anywhere near close to the 4000 kV that it has just on the side and you're probably going to burn your motor out if you put a big five inch prop on something like this on the other hand if you put this five inch bullnose prop on this uh 2100 uh 2205 motor this would probably be under propped this motor just here because it has a lower kV and also it is a lot larger than this little motor it's going to be able to spin these props very very easily and this is probably more suited uh, at least on a three or four cell motor a three or four cell battery this is going to be much more suited to say a six inch prop so when you're choosing your kv be very very careful and think about what size prop you're going to put on them that's as a general but also as you go up they get heavier which brings us into point number three and we're going to talk about their weight all right, and the next thing we're going to talk about is weight. And weight is extremely important because uh, these motors can be quite heavy. There is a large difference in the weight between the motors. They can be some of the heaviest components on your craft. Now, for example, this Cobra one just here, the 2206, is coming in at 30 grams, as opposed to I've got a DYS 4000 kV, and with, even without the leads clips, it's only coming in at 12 grams. And these little motors are even lighter on here. I just don't have any spares, so I can't take them off, actually. Anyway, so there is a huge difference in weight between these two and you also need to consider that's going to get even worse when you realize you have to have four of these on the craft or if you're crazy enough to build a hex or something like that that's even more weight so there would be six of these so once you've picked the right size motor and you've got the right kv for your needs and things like that you also need to make sure that if you can shed any weight uh that you can do that as well because some of these motors are actually heavier than the other even when they're in the same sort of field Alrighty, and the next thing we're going to look at is what is the recommended voltage to run these things in, to run these things at, and that's all got to do with how much amps they can handle. Now, just a quick little uh, lesson here. De depending on the size of the prop you put on your motor will determine how many amps that it actually pulls out. For example, this thing is going to pull barely any amps because it's uh, going to be running three inch props in one of my builds, so it shouldn't be pulling too many. For example, this motor just here, this is an Emax uh, 2204 2300 kV motor. Uh, if I put on, say, a 5030 old gem fan sort of prop that was really didn't have very much bite at all, it wouldn't pull too many amps and it'd be a bit uh, also a bit nice on my ESCs. But if I loaded this up, say, with a bull nose or or even a tri or quad blade prop it's going to pull a lot more amps and uh, the more amps go in here means the more heat and uh, the amount of voltage and current that's flowing through these things and if you have too much you can pretty much cook it and it's going to smoke and melt and cause all sorts of problems so when you're buying them make sure you look online and look at some of the charts and stuff and it'll say either the maximum amps that it can handle or some of them even have the maximum uh, cells of lipos that you can use so uh, this one I think is a 2 and 3s and some of them are, this one's just a recommended as a 3s lipo and then so you've got some other ones that go to uh, 3s and 4s and things like that so definitely think about what cell count you're going to be running on your batteries that hooks up to your quad Now the final thing, and this is either important or less important depending on uh, what sort of craft you want to build, but that is the efficiency rating. So some of these motors can spin the props at the, with the same amount of thrust, but for less amps uh, or, or are more efficient. And so I've got some two motors just here. They're exactly the same same numbers. So the 2204 2300 kV Emax motor and the 2204 2300 Cobra motor. And one of these is more efficient than the other. So that's that really comes down to how well they're made and their tolerances and the types of copper and the wire and things they use like that. So if you're really into longer flight times, definitely check out the efficiency ratings of your motors. So there's usually little charts and things like that that you can look at. Uh, they're definitely recommended. Now this is especially important efficiency rating if you are actually building some big, say, filming rigs and things like that because you're after flight time. But uh, now I guess the meta in terms of the racing quads, efficiency is probably put on the back scale to things like performance and amp rating and things like that.
Alrighty, so maybe some of you out there don't want to do your research or uh, you just like, Stuart, just tell me which one I should buy, please, or what one's right for me, like you said in the video. Alright, so I've got uh, eight motors just here and we're going to go through what each one of them is best for, I guess, and what size craft you'd use it on, depending on the prop size. So we'll talk about what props to put these on. Uh, this one just here, the 20, this is a Cobra 2206 2100 KV racing motor. And this is probably best suited for some really fast quads, I guess, some six inch quads, sort of your drags, the style quads just there. So we're running some six inch bull nose on these bad boys. Moving down the line into a little bit higher KV, we've got some 2204, 2300 KV Cobra motors. And uh, also that's the same stats on the Emax motors. And these would be best suited for say, either just a six inch tapered prop or a five inch bull nose prop, or also a five inch tri prop. That's probably what they would be best for on say a three or a four cell lipo. Uh, moving down here, we have the RCX 2205, 2633. KV motor. Now you notice that is a lot higher KV than these ones. This is 2300. This is jumping up to 2633 KV. Now this one's probably best suited to say a four inch bull nose prop or a four inch tri bull nose or even just a five inch prop. That's would probably what would be best for this one. Moving down the line to a bit smaller motor, we've got an 1806 2700 KV and I would say this is best for a four inch bull nose prop. That's probably what I think is the perfect, uh, perfect motor just there for that. And so that's going to be great for your 180 size quads and things like that. Going down the line even further still, I'm going to switch these two around because I've got the 1306 3100 KV motor and that's going to be best for your tapered 4 inch props or uh, some bull nose 3 nose props. Moving down the line again, I've got a 1306 uh, 4000 KV motor and that's going to be best I guess for your 3 inch props or your 3 inch bull nose props as well just there. And finally right at the end we've got this little bad boy just here. This is the Rotor X motor, the 1105. This is what they call the Gatling motors and these things are great at spinning the 30-20 props, the T-style props just here so uh, they spin them quite well. And just take note that these are my opinions on these motors anyway. I'm sure a lot of people have uh, different experiences with a lot of these different motors or a lot of different brands. And another thing to also note is that different brands have uh, different quality standards. So some motors fall apart, some motors have problems, some motors slip magnets or snap off their shafts and things like that. Also do a bit of reading and just find out which ones work and which ones people are having problem with, especially if you're about to make a big order or something like that because having great motors can make a definite difference to your quad. Now with all that information there's one thing I didn't talk about uh, because it's pretty straightforward and that is thrust. So with all these other things if you think about them and you sort of work out what motor is right for you and you look up your motors and stuff like that and you're comparing them and one has higher thrust than the other definitely pick that one. So pretty much with thrust you want to get the highest numbers that you can because that's going to mean you can do the biggest punch outs and get the lowest lap times if you're racing and stuff like that. Anyway I hope this helps some of you guys out there because I know some of these numbers can be a little misleading when you first sort of start looking into building mini quads or maybe just trying to build a different one you want to know what one is right for you. Uh, so yeah hopefully that helped you guys. Subscribe for more FPV related content and as always happy flying. Uh, thrust. Now thrust should probably be one of the things thrust should probably be one of the things.